my research focuses a lot on regional trade agreements and how they're designed and how they're implemented. What we see in trade agreements so far is mainly aspirational. It's mainly sort of highlighting something that we want to see happen, not necessarily something that will happen because of the way it's crafted. And these provisions are not necessarily binding on the parties. They don't necessarily lead us to a certain outcome. So we are going to follow this with some additional research that suggests some very concrete things that might be considered in future trade agreements that really address the distributional aspect and some of the challenges that women face in reality. We presented our research on the proposed gender protocol under the African continental free trade area. We noticed that most of these gender chaps, as though they have provisions that are good on paper, they lack very key indicators on monitoring and evaluation. So from our research, we noticed that there are areas within the various regions where women cannot own lands. You cannot um, access credit facilities with financial institutions without a male figure behind you. And and then there are issues of labor constraints, especially for women in the informal cross-border trade. We realize that they face a lot of um, harassment at the borders because they are not aware of um, trade information, rules and procedures that they are supposed to go through. And so usually custom officials take advantage of them. Some of them um, extort money from them. Some of them even harass them sexually. The question, the research question is how family decisions respond to trade globalization. We are actually looking at the U.S. granting permanent normal trade relations to China in 2000, which further became effective after China joined WTO in 2001. And then we look at the changes of the family decisions between 2000 and 2010. So uh, we see a reduction in the fraction of young women currently married. As a result, the fraction of young women uh, with children also uh, decreases. What causes these changes? So we find uh, it is actually due to an increase in the relative economic status of young women relative to men. So basically we find that the uh, trade liberalization uh, causes more women uh, to uh, participate in the labor markets. And then also leads to more women to relocate to the service sectors where wages are higher. So this actually uh, uh, introduces a larger gain for women and then also uh, narrows the uh, uh, gender gap in wages. My area is looking at um, entrepreneurial women exporters and really understanding their lived experiences as being exporters, um, what enables them to export, what drives them, what is their agency, what are their challenges. In South Africa, we recently made great strides in getting large data sets that can explain differences or giving a gendered view of women um, in companies and also in companies that export. We find that the women entrepreneurial exporters are go-getters, they're energetic, uh, they're tough and they're determined to succeed and they have done so and they have done so by creating their own networks their own support systems and we think that with more government and private sector support they will be able to do so much more